You might have seen a video doing the rounds of a grey robot that looks ultra lifelike. Is it real? Is it fake? Well, at CES 2022, Amica the robot was on show and let me tell you, the experience of interviewing this robot was very uncanny. So Morgan, tell me, you've got Amica there next to you. This is a very lifelike robot. Why would you design a robot that looks so human? Yeah, well, the main use case for humanoid robot right now is for entertainment, is for communication, and is for interaction with other people. Amica is the pinnacle of what we can do, but it's still not exactly like a human. But we didn't want to make it look exactly like a human. We wanted to make it look like a robot. Uh, it's the vision of what humans see, humanoid robots, in the future. You've seen all of the films, they all look like this. So we designed something around what we see, we envisage robots, humanoid robots to be in the future. And how do you create those really human expressions? I mean, looking at Amica responding to you, there's little movements of eyebrows, if you can call them eyebrows. How did you actually build the robot to look so human with those expressions? Well, what we do is we first look at a real human. It's what we call animation first. So what does a real human do? Um, how do they move? And then we take that animation and we design mechanics around it. So the mechanics can only do what a human can do. Yeah, see, she whacked me. <laughs> Once we've got that, then it's quite easy to automate those expressions because whatever the mechanics do looks lifelike. So Amic has got quite a few motors in, in its head. Um, but we can see Amica going through some facial expressions now, opening her mouth. A big wide smile is one of the things that, that we want Amica to do. So um, big, big smile, Amica. Ah, lovely. <laughs> Very thoughtful. Where would we kind of see this, this robot, Amica, out in the wild? Um, this is mainly probably service robotics. So the actual interaction with humans, um, moving around in a human space um that's going to come in the future well i'm talking probably 10 years before you're actually going to see something like this walking amongst us are you expecting in say 10 20 years from now that we could see amica robots walking running dancing climbing are they going to start looking like boston dynamics robots that can run across a field at speed i'm i'm asking and also almost afraid of the answer here so this is why we created the artificial body and the artificial body is a human-like form that everyone can relate to and everyone can interact with without having to look through a user manual. So what kind of level of artificial intelligence have you baked in in terms of uh, the communication capabilities and Amica understanding and uh, responding, even speaking to you? So there's some artificial intelligence, and most of the artificial intelligence at the minute that is on Amica is revolving around the vision system. So Amica does actually have a camera in each of its eyes, so it can see what's going on. Um, so it can detect people, um, it can track their face, um, it can detect other objects such as my finger, it can follow my finger around, um, I can wave at it, um, and then it can see, always see it move backwards then. What did you kind of think of the, uh, the internet's response to Amica? It's the emotion and how it moves, the emotion that you get out of the face. Suddenly that just sparked something in the um, social media universe. And we were incredibly surprised that overnight it became a sensation. We got 24 million views on one Twitter, uh, Twitter post. And um, Elon Musk even commented on, on that post. So uh, incredible response. And we're at CES right now. This is the first time this has been shown off in public. Um, and we're expecting to be very busy showing off Amica. Uh, how do you think humans respond to something when it's a bit like them, but it's still got that uncanny element? What we found was when you try and make it look ultra like -like, to our other Mesmer line, it looks a bit more sinister because it's right in the uncanny valley. But actually when we created Amica, 
we, we pulled it backwards out of the uncanny valley because it looks less human, because it's plastic, because it's metal, um, and because it's of grey skin. It's suddenly, oh, hello, people seem to respond to that quite positively. And people like this much more than they liked the, uh, the ultra-realistic robots that we also do. When you're demoing Amica, what are some of your favourite things to do to kind of show the, um, the power of that interaction and just how impressive those lifelike features are? Yes, yeah, so as, as we've demonstrated the um, reacting to personal space, but we can also talk to Amica. So I can say, hello Amica, how are you? I am doing well, thank you. We can, we've created Amica, so it's more lifelike than any other robot. The shoulder movements are just like human movements. You have movements in the center as well as out of the shoulder. And that actually means that instead of hitting me, Amica can move a hand all the way up to the side of her head. I'm interested to know um, maybe how, how the robot is finding Vegas or CES. How are you finding Las Vegas and CES? Well, as a robot, I actually don't feel anything at all. But if I did feel, I would feel happy to be here. Do you see a robot like this becoming a, an accepted part of our lives? Do you see it maybe being something I might ask a question of at the airport? Or would I have an Amica robot in my home helping me out? So most of the, the, the use cases for this will be the interaction. So yes, in the airport, that's a, a great use case uh, because you can either have many, many humans or you can have many humans and many robots. And you can have that interaction in the same way. Having it in your home is probably not something that's going to happen in the near future. A robot like this is, can do many tasks, just like a human. But there are other robots that you can get that will do those tasks uh, a lot better because they're designed for the job and a lot cheaper. And you can get them today. So why would you buy a humanoid robot that will probably cost more than your house? Maybe in the future, maybe in 50 years time. But I'm going to say right now, I don't think you'll have one of these in your home in the next decade. What does it feel like to work on something that's had such a huge response and to be at that at that bleeding edge of robotics? Is it something you, you tell your mates down in the pub that you're working on a robot that could one day uh, be the future of the future of society in robotics? It's it's a fantastic thing to do. It's a fantastic uh, technology to be a part of developing. And I, I hope over the next 10 years we can continue innovating and continue to spark people's imagination and continue with this, this, uh, this social media sensation. So everyone actually then knows who Amica is. Thank you for the interview. Anytime. All right, tell me what you think about Amica the robot. Totally freaked out or is it really, really cool? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're here, make sure you subscribe. We have plenty more weird and wonderful tech just like this. Well, maybe not just like this. If you're walking and you don't always realize it, but you're always falling. With each step, you fall forward slightly and then catch yourself from falling. Over and over, you're falling and then catching yourself from falling. And this is how you can be walking and falling at the same time.